Good day and welcome to your favourite spot programme on TV Plus Sport. We've been receiving so much comment as regards to the programme and it's been a beautiful moment reading some of your comments. And um, if you want to be part of the show, you can join us on all our social media platforms to be part of this wonderful show. If you're joining us for the first time, we have been watched in over 40 countries in Africa. And uh, my name is Muda Shibushitu. I'll be your anchor in the next um, few minutes. Um, while we look at one of the most pressing spot stories in Nigeria before we go to one that the world is talking about, that's talking about boxing. But first of all, uh, let's look at the National Youth Games, the 2024 National Youth Games that just ended yesterday. There's so much to talk about this. Joining me to analyze and dissect this wonderful program, a wonderful sport term administrator. Online joining me is Dr. Martin Morgan a sport um, administrator um, in several countries and he has done so well for himself. It's good to have you, Dr. Martin Morgan. Yeah, Muda, once again, uh, it's nice being together for this uh, uh, moment. In the studio with me is um, Professor Erwin Wanyahu, who we know that um, his love for youth and sport has brought him a wide acclaimed knowledge in Nigeria. Um, doctor, uh, Professor Rada, it's good to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Mudashi. So this ge gentleman will be talking and setting something important as regards to the National Youth Games. And the game, um, we know what is in the eighth edition just ended in Asaba at the famous Stephen Keshin Stadium with um, Delta State retaining it for the um, second time. They won back-to-back -back, um, retaining that. The game started in Abuja. Um, eight years ago, and we had it in Illori, in the University of Illori, um, where the several edition, the second edition, third edition, before um, we have Delta hosting it. But it's Delta on top of um, the lock table after a week of sportsmanship between Nigerian youth. I will start with you, Dr. Martin Morgan, and it's something I know you specialize in. Um, doctor, what, what can you say about the just concluded national youth games that ended yesterday? Well, uh, once again, and I do hi to the prof of there. Uh, once again, we, we saw the same thing we saw last year, some years back. We saw the hosting uh, state coming top. And that tells you that even uh, the position has not drastically changed. You see Delta, Lagos, and Edo. And so, or invariably, what, what, what that tells you is telling you that, yes, we still have those talents. Year in, year out, we still have the talent. We have the youth to nurture, like we said. But the question I keep on asking, what is the data? What, how are we keeping? How are we following their progress in life in terms of their schooling and everything? So these are the questions. It's not, uh, it's not only coming to the Jamboree Park. We have all the youth coming around the uh, apart from some of the states, one state would have only one person, Gombe State, have one young girl uh, coming in. So what do we do with those data? Have we been able to nurture them according to the paper, uh, what we have on the paper? That is the question. I'm, I don't have any problem. But the organization also, I, I am very happy that this time around there's no issue of uh, medal padding. And I hope that the, 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 the table we had really reflected the true position. Of even though they were talking about some of the ages, uh, how they have to reduce the age and the start to do, but all those things are polemic stuff for me. Not really matter. The matter is that the talents are there. How do we nurture them and prepare them and follow their lifestyle and see how their programs are going? What programs do you have for them? Before I come to into the um, with um, Professor Emmanuel Yahoo, but what what do you think is still getting the benefit it should get? I mean, the National Youth Games, do you think it's serving the purpose that it should serve, the National Youth Games since the 8th edition? Uh, do you think it's still giving us what is expected for and the reason why um, it was created? Well, uh, on paper, it is expected that yeah, the expectations are going to be the same. Thing that going, but the implementations, I don't think we are really moving, getting what we, we expect to get in terms of implementation. But if you are talking about the paperwork and the expectations, we are we are we have theoretically put them down. 
But what is this having? Because like I told you the last time that the last uh, 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 Paris Olympics, almost 300 medals were won by students from various universities in the world, 26 countries. So how many of us, how many of our kids that all transited from that program or since the inception got to that point? So that's why I'm telling you that theoretically it's okay, but in terms of, of implementation... Okay. Um, let's come to the studio where we have um, Professor Enwa Yang. You read what um, Dr. Martin just said as regards to the National Youth Games. The National Youth Games is one that was created to give um, the, the country its future talent by making sure we catch them young. You have been an advocate of the youth with several sports programs going on. Tell us, do you think... Um, the National Youth Games is achieving its purpose and aim why it was created. Uh, honestly, uh, um, just like uh, what uh, Dr. Martin said, uh, he raised many issues that are very, very uh, important that uh, the nation really need to look at. Uh, for some time now, it looks more like uh, it's a paper thing we are doing, more of a theoretical thing we are seeing. But notwithstanding, we can't, uh, um, I mean, delegate the efforts of uh, the organizers. But what we are praying is that uh, we should really en enhance the program, uh, the competition, extend it where we can say we have been able to achieve the aim and objective of this uh, festival, I mean, uh, this uh, game, you know. So um, one of the things is to enhance uh, the uh, sports uh, that we know generally and then also develop the uh, youth uh, uh, also area of uh, talent identification you can see having this talent and at the end of the day uh, or the end of the competition those that we have seen that they are exceptionally sound or they are very uh, uh, good we are not able to carry them from that moment uh, we talk about data, uh, taking their data. There should be a follow-up. But after the game, we just don't hear their name again. And that is the end of it. And uh, later, we still be looking for athletes who represent our country uh, at the international level. So it's a big issue. And uh, that is why a lot of people are calling for serious implementation of everything that is necessary to put in place. Okay. Now... We should also look at the uh, community engagement. You know, we can't just uh, every year we come out with these uh, national youth games without proper engagement from the grassroots because it's from the grassroots we get to this stage. So there are so many issues that I think uh, we need to look at. We have talked about uh, age, cheat, and the rest of them. We are not uh, now. We should look carefully in the area of uh, age category, you see, making sure that everything is organized and the right ages, I mean, everyone that is in the right age is supposed to be with his age. So we should look at that so that we can make mockery of uh, uh, the idea that has been put in place regarding this. Another area I would like to chip in as well is uh, looking at the organization proper, the infrastructure in place and also the awareness of this game because the awareness is not as loud as it's supposed to be i can tell you we are over 200 uh, to over 200 million people in this country but you the see the information so. is also limited to a lot of people talking about sponsorship for this program is also an issue so we should take it beyond what it's supposed to be okay if you are just joining us we'll be looking at the just concluded national games and we are trying as much as possible to see whether it sets up the purpose. Joining me online, um, if you're just joining the program, is Dr. Martin Morgan. And I'm going to ask this question. Um, in the studio with me is Professor Emi Wayahu. Dr. Martin Morgan, let me, let me come to you on this. There have been so much about eight cheats when it comes to the National Youth Games. There have been so much about not using the necessary um, age about qualify, uh, um, of, um, to, be part, to participate. Some said it should be under 15. As expected, the one just concluded was under 15. That's everybody, every youth from 15 are only eligible to it. 
We've been hearing stories about um, going to be 17 because the Delta State government and the governor himself said that it should be accept we should allow the youth game should be from under 17. Regardless to all these, there's still so much issue of eight cheats. I've been part of the youth game four times in the in, in, in the law university of um, of Illinois. How can we curb this issue of eight cheats? And why is it at a win at all cost syndrome? You see with some of our coaches and officials. Why don't you understand that at this stage it is not about winning the medals, perhaps for some, but it's about enhancing ten, um, talent to promote um, the future of Nigerian sport. Tell us your opinion on that. Well, uh, strictly, I, I think a mood uh, and prof, uh, we can ensure that the issue of H it is a macro problem. Macro problem in the sense that it cut across all the fabric we are seeing, and which is that devoid about data. If you don't have a synchronized data analysis or system, whereby a child who is born in Cairo Namoda and the one that is born in uh, 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 Ahuda, River State, should have the same date, should have the same date and the same period, and say that yeah, the data is connected somewhere, you should be able to see that Usman that is born in Cairo Namoda and uh, another person that is born uh, in, uh, you know, say, uh, Wakari that is born in uh, uh, Porakot should be able to understand that, yes, they have the same age. But when they come at the same time, they start having different things because there's no data. And that is a macro issue. It's not that. It's because of that. And at the same time, at the same time, we are very much interested in promoting games. We promote, we don't prepare in the sense that even the coaches and the officials, they even assist. If you ask somebody, he would tell you my real age is 12, uh, 25. But my football age is 19. You see that that party which have been being heard by the officials. We saw it here in Nigeria, it even happened in a national team. We do respect, even in the end in the late 80s, we saw it in around that 23. Some sincere say I mentioned in name who was implicated in that situation when they play in Russia. You, you remember that? So these are the issues that we see have a lot of them. We saw them even in our own under 17. We saw them how somebody who is in under 17 playing in, 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 in Dubai. So, yeah, he was now informed that the second wife just had the second baby. So how do you explain that? So these are the situations we find. So the age cheat is an issue that we need to change. Even the official themselves, the age they are using to operate is not their ages. So these are what we are saying. So they translate that type of uh, malfeasance to the players and the athlete now come up and your body tells you that no. At a particular age, you cannot do certain things. So this is what is affecting us. So it has to be a total overhauling of the system. And let us know that the adequate age, and we monitor the schools. Now we can see that some of the school certificates, they have pictures. Even with that age and the picture to determine that the particular age should be able to do that, it's not working. Mm. It's a macro situation that has eaten the fabric. And so we need to get it back and reduce it. Because some of them have two or three age declarations and uh, no birth certificates. So how do we do it? Let every person come up with the birth certificate. Even in some areas, we don't even record. The data is not there. They will tell you I was born during the, during the, the day that there was storm in the market. How do you explain that situation during storm in the market? That is why even the MRO scan that does not even pick us very well. It does not pick up most of the people to explain because they check your left wrist and see that a particular one is not working. You can take two, two uh, uh, twins. You see that one is green and one, the other one does not go. So this is a problem. Well, so we have to now see at that, that even we, where they are picking the players from in the community, the prof talk about the community. Then that means even from the secondary school, the primary school, the headmaster or the game master should be able to go and decide, yes, this guy from my secondary school or my private college is at age 14, he's in the actual age. So by the time we're able to bring that sensitization, we inform the people, then we should be able to say, yeah, we are now correcting what has been done. We, we, we know, you and I know. Yeah. We see it. So uh, that's the only thing we can do. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Martin, well said. But I, I want to ask um, Mr. Um, Professor Erwin Wanyahu that what um, do you think should be done to solve this issue, he has alighted the problem and mm. is a major problem. And the problem, according to him, go according to Dr. Martin Morgan, mm. goes beyond just the national games. Mm. It, co um, it cut across 
um, mm. the sports sector in the country yeah. and its needs overhauling. Mm. If you are asked today to solve this problem of mm. a cheat, mm. because um, Daniel Igali, mm. who is the president of Nigeria Wrestling Federation, mm. in an interview of recently um, said that um, there's a cheating and he is also part of the system. Uh, so what, what, what do you, and that's to show that is the acknowledgement. We've acknowledged mm. that this is always a problem. Every yeah. year in and out, there's a problem of this magnitude. Mm. Here you are now, you've got so much to do with youth sport, yeah. sport abuse. So what do you think, what advice mm. will you tell the sport ministry or mm. those in charge of the youth games mm. to take ahead of the next national youth games? Yeah, very important. You see, um, data collection is very important from the, uh, from the school and also from the grassroots. The moment we're able to have these data on ground and checking the history of uh, these athletes, you know, starting from when they are as young as, you know. Uh, so the moment we have that, you know, it will be hard, just like uh, what uh, Dr. Martin said. So it's very easy to locate their profile, knowing that, okay, uh, Adamu is so, so, so age, it cannot be changed, it's there. And already we have the information starting from uh, uh, where they are coming from. So once we have that, we can be able to determine to say, okay, yes, we have this history, this person has been there before, you know, with so, so, so age, it cannot be changed. Because what usually happens is that most times, if maybe someone is 15 years and he participated sometime, yes. 15 years, which is true, and then you let her again after two years. There's also an issue, let me, let me explain. There's also an mm. issue of N and N. Don't you yes. know N and N that seems compulsory for mm. every student mm. in the country? Secondary school, primary school mm. should be a process of getting data collection. There should be a synergy. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that uh, so many schools have been doing that. Apart from that, even in Lagos State here, I can tell you for free that the Lagos State uh, Sports Commission, in fact, there is a lot they are doing with data now collecting data from different schools and also making sure that um, the sports you are participating in, if it is a particular sport, they have the history. If you are beating a particular uh, thing or you are exceptional in this, they have every data. And they are also issuing forms to schools. And then there is this collection of information directly from school which include the NIM we are talking about. So it's very easy to verify some of this information now. But what, what, what we should know is that, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. Mm. So gradually, what the Lagos State Commission, uh, Sports Commission is doing is really fantastic. Because now they are gradually um, hit, because so many issues, like so many sports uh, competitions, where you see a lot of controversy, yeah. talking about age, uh, age you know, it has bring a lot of issues, and now they are gradually taking that step. So there is a lot we have to do. Okay. Uh, all these um, agencies that are in charge of uh, data collection and the rest have to step up. And we should, just like what uh, Dr. Martin said, you know, someone saying, uh, I was born when the market, yeah. there was an issue. That doesn't even make sense sometimes, you know, people coming up with well, cases like that. We hear no, cases that is like the that. truth. He, he's right. You know, you see people, all, all you see is age declaration, age declaration. You hardly see a uh, certificate, uh, birth certificate, you know, coming from a hospital. Hmm. That is well, I mean, that you can say this Recognize. is an authentic uh, birth certificate, you know. There's so much to talk on this, but still on you, yeah. um, while we saw that, I will yet have Dr. Martin's feedback on this question. Hmm. Why do we make the National Games seem like a... a, a, a um, a mustering seed job. Is that how um, the national game should be designed? There shouldn't. It's, it's about participation. It's mm. about bringing the country together. Mm. It's also about picking the best of the best. The best of the mm. best doesn't necessarily need to win at this age, mm. age so that they will represent. But we've not seen in the national games since the eighth edition that started in Abuja that any of them has not really given us that, not so much of them, mm. have given us that national identity that's catch them young and are representing us. Mm. Few I can mention, maybe something like Deborah Kickpen, mm. they're about, as the case may be. But my question is, is the National Youth Games a must-win at all costs 
game. Mm. It's, it's not and it's not supposed to be. The thing is that sometimes, you know, people are being carried by excitement. And uh, others also think uh, maybe it's something that they really need to win to be able to be known. You see, it, it, it's not supposed to be a do or die affair. It's not supposed to be something that uh, we have to war over, you know. But it's quite unfortunate we have found ourselves. Um, I, I would also like a situation whereby people are so excited, but not to the extent of trying to win by all means. If you can win by all means, in as much as whatever you are coming up with is legal yeah. and is acceptable, it's part of the rules of uh, the competition, then it's go for me. But whereby you are trying to win by all means or trying to cause a lot of uh, issue by all means through illegal ways and through like what we have just mentioned, H.E.T. and the rest of them, then it doesn't really make sense. Okay. Um, Dr. Matimo, what's your opinion on, on that? Why, why do you make... Uh, because Delta won that 40 medals, um, Lagos State won that 20 medals. At the end of the day, when you ask for that boy in the next two years, is nowhere to be found. When we ask for that girl that gave us that murder, um, she or, he or she may not be found. And coincidentally, if the, that girl or that boy is known in the next two, three years after this game, it's more of a result of the personal development or the parental support or guidance support. It's not more of the state government who claim the gold or the medal support. Why, why, why do we lose the um, the, 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 flip or the the energy mm. after the youth games. Why is there so much gap between the sports, the child that gave us the medal, and the sport um, commission or the sport council, as the case may be in different states? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's, it's not very far fetched. It's a very straightforward situation we, we see ourselves. One, the sports is being considered by various state governors or government who are in charge as a job, job for the boys. Mm. And then those administrators, with due respect to all of them, who are daring, look at the preparation of the game as a means of getting money for themselves mm. to do over invoicing and over, over whatever, over, over hosting. Mm. And in that process of doing that, somebody needs to go and tell the governor, Oga, we have 200 athletes participating, and each athlete is going to cost us 10,000 to feed. And you and I know that you don't have 200 athletes. You have 100 athletes. Mm. So in that type of situation, even the feeding I've been hosting, then you don't discover that it's just a way of the cartel to make money for themselves. So it becomes a routine. That is why they are not interested in following the step of the talent they have discovered in their various states. Like you said, they'll just go to the oblivion. We'll not see them. Rather, we are now preparing again to see who's going to host the next. Like right now, Delta State say they're going to host for, uh, the five, uh, for five editions because of the concession. But for me, I'm 14 it. 14 in the sense that if you are talking about infrastructural development, you shouldn't be only from Delta State. You can now say, okay, fine, let us have a spot policy whereby the rotation will go around or hosting. We are going to talk about security. But you discover that sport is a tool that can also be used to simmer down insecurity in the various states. Mm -hmm. If it's not make, made composite that each state has to go by a rotation and host this competition. But at the same time, also going to be more money for the boys. Mm -hmm. And more money for the boys, they are not interested on those that they are using as pawns. They use the athletes as pawns. So that is why they they fizzle out. You don't hear about them. If you want to hear about them, maybe you hear him running from Oman or from Fiji Island somewhere, and somebody will now bring him back to the national team. So this is the problem. Okay. So well, 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 well said, Dr. Martin. This connect is always there. Yeah, you, you, gave a, you gave a response to a question I was about to ask, and that's talking about um, the sport minister um, saying that in the next four or five years, I, I think it's four years, Delta State will we host um, the national games. And you've given us a very valid point that it does not um, ex accelerate um, the growth of sport infrastructure or the game of the sport. But there's also other opinion about states that are not ready. In the past, they've been looking for which state to host this national sport festival, also like the national games, and um, national sport festival. But don't you think that um, the inability for other states to be ready 
might be the reason why Delta State, though it also has its pros and cons. Let me ask um, uh, Professor Enwayahu, do you think it's a good reason for a state to just host a sport festival, National Youth Games, for four times in a row? What happened to Anambra? What happened to all your states? Some of the states don't have the facilities. Don't you think this can bring about the renovation, reconstruction, or newly built um, facilities in the state to enhance sport growth? What can you say about that? Uh, yes. Um, uh, first, I want to thank uh, the Delta State Government uh, for trying to host it as many times as possible. But that is not truly encouraging, as we call it, national uh, youth, games. youth games. So it doesn't really uh, portray that uh, national unity for us. So, and again, it also doesn't uh, encourage uh, development of uh, sports and also youth development as well. If you ask me, I think we really need to spread it across uh, the country. Now, I know for sure that one of the problems is uh, infrastructural development. But if, then if state can be pushed and say, okay, we are hosting this thing next two years, in, or ne I mean, next year, for instance, we are going to, we want this uh, National Youth Game to be hosted in uh, uh, Anambra or maybe Kano. You know, it will push the government to be able to put whatever they have on ground to put it in shape mm. against the sports. And that will help to develop, I mean, will help the state to develop whatever they have on ground for sports. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I feel sad enough, you know, I went to Ondo State last time. Uh, what the governor did, I mean, the previous governor, uh, the, Late, uh, the left, yeah, you know, very nice uh, swimming pool and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. But the management is so poor. So if we say, okay, this is coming to Ondo, I know, of course, the state government will immediately put it in shape. So these are the kind of things, you know, not just put leaving it at a place, you know. Massive. Yeah. Not constructing other... Exactly. So let's spread it, let's, let's spread it, it and uh, uh, see how others can also use that to develop. Okay. Uh, so okay, you want to say something? Like yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Dr. Martin. Yes. You see, like... If you say some still don't have the facility, two states who are nearby, very close, mm. Anambra and Enugu, can join. Bayesa rivers can join. Akwaibu cross river can join and do that and say, well, let us host and see. So this is how it is. It's not necessarily that. You see, so and government is a continuum. If that is on paper, irrespective of which government comes in, they will know that a particular period is going to be my turn to mm. host. Yeah, they stay eight years. Mm. So what are you talking about? If you can go around that, the two states come together and join. So what stops it? That would be another way out to improve some of this facility and promote even friendship mm. amongst the states. Okay. This is another way we can do that. All like one state just having it. No, no, no. For me, it's a yeah. um, um, uh, monopoly, and it's not helping. It's not helping us. Okay, we 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 had um, a clip of an interview with um, the DG of Lagos State Sports Commission. Uh, we, are, we are going to watch that, and I want um, Africans, Nigerians to listen carefully so that we can see how possible or how realistic you share your own opinion, Dr. Martin Morgan, while Professor Enwanya will share his opinion on what the DG of um, Lagos State Sport Commission said after Lagos State came second um, at the national games. Enjoy this. When we come back, we are going to pick our topic on this statement. I run for the money and I have told everyone that cares to listen that the future of sports particularly that is connected to talent development grassroots sport development which is actually the focus of national youth games lies with Lagos State so Lagos and the has, Lagos State has proven with this you know remarkable outing in these national youth games that we are actually um, the set of people to look to watch out for in the future of national youth games you know coming with the number of gold medals particularly i have to make emphasis around the way we have conveniently and confidently 
swept all the gold medals in boxing. You know, a lot of people, and we also trans data, I must say that, in basketball. So we are now looking at different areas of um, our competitive advantage in sports. And I am sure that in the coming years, Lagos State, you know, we, we come first, special program that is called Stars in Lagos State, sport talent that are redefining success. We see these young people as the future of sports in Lagos State. So we are looking at that from the angle of, you know, sports development around education, what they are doing in school, and what the future lies in terms of, you know, some of them we may want to look at entrepreneurship, how we can connect entrepreneurship with sports. And these are some of the things Governor Babaji De Swanlu, you know, is doing in terms of deployment of resources to sports to ensure sports talent identification and retention. And we have equally improved in terms of welfare that is provided for these people. And we're also exchanging and shake with private sector because we know that government cannot do it alone. So we are rebuilding that trust and they are actually coming forward. We have a lot of big names now in the corporate world in Lagos State who are actually dedicated to supporting grassroots sport development. So we look into the areas of scholarship, opportunity businesses, and crafts, you know, in, in, in sports in general. Those are some of the areas that we want to do to ensure that we retain our talent. And gone are the days where our stars some states will be coming to poach our stars. We are giving the best of incentives now through the support of Mr. Governor. So we want to come bigger in the coming tournament. It's very challenging because um, we had last year there were issues that we did not want to reoccur. So we need to do a lot to clean those up. And um, Everybody, nearly everybody testified that things improved tremendously, like transportation, accommodation, feeding improved, and the technical conduct of the game was also very good. People testified to that. We had a stakeholder meeting of all the states, and they all spoke to this. So I'm happy that we have all the effort we put in. Interesting moment that um, the, um, in Asaba, at um, Mr. Vikeshi Stadium where I've just ended the 8th edition of the National Year Games and if you're just joining us, we'll be looking at the National Year Games in the studio with me is uh, Professor Eri Wayang online has been with the program who has been given his perfect opinion on the state of the National Year Games is Dr. Martin Morgan. So uh, I'll start with Dr. Martin Morgan. What, what can you dissect from the statement of um, the DG Lagos State Sports Commission? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Lagos is always the center of excellence, center of planning, the center of what the best we can get in terms of uh, a sport, a cool for sure. What I'm telling you that what, what the DG said, you can see the plan. He has seen a bad collaboration with the private sector. He has seen how to enhance the future of these players or these athletes, how they will be able to go. And those who cannot continue with education, are they going to sport? Then also bringing the business angle is the economic aspect. That is the business of sport. If you can't go there, what will you do to benefit yourself in terms of it to sustain yourself so that you can continue with the speed of it? So some of these elaborate programs, if implemented truly on, on the way they are stated in paper, is going to be one of the best. What stuff other states from copying, even translating it at the national level. So these are the questions. Not that these things don't exist, they exist. They exist. Like I can also listen to that DG. I can see how passionate he is about what they are and how happy they are, but preparing for the next one. So the preparation of the next uh, 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 youth sport tells you that yeah, this is what we are going to come. So we cannot even poach. But at the national level, we say switch. But here you can't poach or switch because they are going to give you the incentive. So these are those type of incentive that is lacking at the center. That I see some of our Nigerian athletes switching nationality. So for me, for the youth, if they're able to contain that eight cheat and see that this program are going are, are done seamlessly as being planned, it's going to be one of the best you can think of. I think kudos to the DG. Okay. And I listen to the veteran uh, Solomon, Solomon uh, Mr. Mm. Mr. So Chief, Chief Solomon Ogba. He has been in that circle for a very long time. So he understands what to do. In fact, they have blown out the encyclopedia of the athleticism in Nigeria because they have been there for long. 
So bringing, uh, I tell you about the improvement, about the logistic and feeding. The last one we had challenges about uh, logistic. We have challenges about feeding, even accommodation. But see if we can, we didn't hear any serious scandal this time around. I think we give them a kudos, we give them the pass mark. Okay. But the bottom line is, how do you nurture and manage the issue of a cheat? Oh, okay. Um, your own opinion on um, Dr. Lekon Fatudu's um, yeah. um, speech on, on this on Guam, the, uh, the National Air Games. What, what can you dissect from it? Yeah, honestly speaking, I'm not surprised. Uh, Lagos, as we all know, have been doing excellently well. And uh, the plans are there. Uh, they are doing so much uh, to make sure that uh, they are being represented at all times. Uh, what we are seeking for and uh, asking is to see how other states can implement you know, similar things and see how things can really work for their state when it comes to sports and youth development. It's very important because so far, I can tell you, uh, we have not seen much you know, uh, from other states. So it looks more like uh, we are s having a... Um, Delta so active, Lagos so active, Edo State. Edo State as well. You know, we really need to, you know, boost whatever we have as a uh, sports infrastructure and also look towards the youth. So, uh, so the all they said is fantastic. Okay, yes, um, away from um, National Youth Games, we'll go straight into boxing. Yes, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we'll go straight into boxing. I'll be looking at um, the IBF World Everyweight Clash between Anthony Joshua and um, the man they call Daniel Dubois, who obviously they are both from UK. There's been so much about the two of them. I'm sure you'll be seeing some of the videos right now as we speak. Uh, and, um, you know, Anthony Joshua is making efforts to become um, the third time heavyweight champion if he defeats um, Daniel Dubois with this. Let's not forget that um, Daniel got that title as a result of Usyk not um, fighting his mandatory fight. So um, the IBF decided to now give the next person after him in that order, which is Daniel um, Dubois. So with me, I'll be looking at uh, what we should what do you think will happen in this fight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I have watched both uh, fighters, you know. Uh, they have made their comment. There is one thing I picked from uh, Anthony Joshua. You know, he said um, uh, he's ready to fight. Uh, but whatever that is going to happen is the moment he enters the ring. Mm. So I quite expect him to do the necessary thing by beating Daniel. So uh, it's not going to be an easy fight. Definitely. Um, uh, don't forget both of them, uh, you know, uh, have uh, similarities, you know, when it comes to the qualities, the attitude in terms of uh, uh, fighting on the ring. So uh, I expect uh, Joshua to do a lot to be able to have the day. But it's not going to be an easy one for him. Okay. Yeah. Doctor, it's going to be Wembley. And we know what um, the, um, Anton Joshua did for Klitschko in Wembley. Um, so tell us your own expert opinion of, of, of the match. And I'm sure this is another time to feel that sensation about um, boxing. This is going to be interesting. And I'm sure this is where a lot of people across the globe will be wanting to see Shall from the African angle, tell us your own opinion and how excited are you? Because it seems a lot of boxing fans are excited <laughs> that Anthony Joshua will be picking up his belt if he defeats Daniel Dubois. Prof said that it's going to be a very balanced fight, likely. We may go for a long stretch, but when you're going to have 96,000 spectators, fans, mm. Mm. at the Wembley Stadium, and this is going to be some of the best we can. We had the fight the last time we have a, a, a Klitschko with Antonio, we have a bad 97. But now we are going to have about 97,000 fans, 96, about 96,000 fans who are coming to that Wembley Stadium to see how AJ, as he's popularly called, will be able to demolish Antonio Dubois, which is not going to be a very hiculant task. 
The edge said this morning that uh, he's ready to rock and roll. Hmm. So <laughs> when he says he's ready to rock and roll, that tells you that if you're able to do that, so you go to the history books, that the legendary of like, the history books are the legendary greatest, Muhammad Ali, Lenos Lewis, hmm. Levanda Holy Faith. So this is what we are trying to look at. Will it, will it be a dream come true? Hmm. Or will it be another disappointment back to back for AJ? Okay. Wembley will decide. Yes, Wembley will decide. And definitely, um, Dr. Martin, that is going to be the size of our wonderful program today because we want to give our viewers across the globe um, the opportunity yes. to see the last press conference between um, Anthony Joshua and um, Tanya Dubois. I want to say a big thank you for being part of today's program, Dr. Martin Morgan. If you Google Dr. Martin Morgan, you definitely know so much about African <laughs> sport. And I'm sure it's also a linguistic. Thank you very much, Dr. Martin Morgan. We we'll now, hopefully, you watch the game and we we'll get much more to talk about after the game. Thank you very much. Okay, merci. Good day, merci, Professor. Au revoir. Yeah, au revoir. Let's um, we'll come back to the studio. Life here on my side is um, Professor Ewan Yahoo. He's a sport agent, does so much with football. Um, and youth talent, talking about him um, and now seeing the youth, mm. the proper channel, the future of the sport. Mm. And he has been giving us his own expert opinion on the national games. He's also rooting for AJ. I'm sure you're also rooting for AJ. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. So we hope that um, AJ that have a connection with the African youth mm. might take today. Thank you very much, um, Professor Enwayan, for being part of today's program. Thank you so much, Mudashi, too. Thank you. Yes, and to my esteemed VRs across the globe, it takes so much to know that um, over 5 million VRs are watching me, knowing that um, Plus TV Africa is in 33 countries in Africa, and I can imagine the VRs who are getting to be part of this, and I'm excited that I'm here telling you what you need to know in the world of sport. Well, I'll tell you today, enjoy the rest of the day, and don't forget, keep watching Plus Sport Africa. Enjoy this wonderful press conference and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye for now. <laughs>